Sha! My name is Alexander Osei from Ghana. You can call me possible for short, right? In our previous lecture, we look at how to calculate or how to derive the lump sum tax multiplier when transfer payment is given. And we realize that transfer payment has no effect on the general multiplier. But the general multiplier can only be altered when we move from lump sum tax to proportional tax. Or it makes sense. Or we move from proportional tax also to an open economy whereby import is included. I hope it makes sense. So what we have understood is that transfer payment cannot change or cannot alter the general multiplier. Today we are going to focus on the proportionate tax multiplier. Now we are saying that the proportionate tax multiplier it is whereby the tax component has been given in percentage or decimals. So when the tax component is being given in proportionate or in percentage, it's being given in percentage or decimals, then we are saying that um, we are working under proportionate tax. I hope it makes sense. Nice one. So we are going to look at how it is computed, right, straight away. Aggregate expenditure equal to this, but consumption is equal to A plus BYD. And BYD is equal to income minus tax. But you're working under proportionate tax. Proportionate tax is TY. We don't write capital T. It's TY, right? We are assuming that transfer payment is not part. We are assuming that transfer payment. We are assuming that transfer payment is not part, right? Good. So if transfer payment is not part, you are going to get this. You are going to get disposable income, not BYD. Disposable income. So the consumption function is going to be A plus B into bracket Y minus proportionate tax. This is how you write proportionate tax, right? Good. So consumption is equal to A plus B Y minus B T Y. B Y B T Y. I hope it makes sense. Now we are going to put everything into the aggregate expenditure function. So aggregate expenditure function is equal to consumption. The consumption is the whole of this. So A plus B Y minus B T Y. Now we come to plus investment plus government spending. I hope it makes sense. Now at equilibrium, at equilibrium, at equilibrium, it output or income is equal to aggregate expenditure. So we can get this, we can get our new function or we can equate the output to this one, right? So we can pick the output and equate it to the whole of this. A plus BY minus BTY plus investment plus government spending. How it makes sense? That's the equilibrium. Now at the equilibrium, so now what we are going to do is that we are going to group like terms. We have Y here. We have Y here. And we have Y here. So we are going to group all the like terms to one side. I hope it makes sense. So we are going to get Y. We are going to get Y. Here is Y. Minus BY. This one plus BTY. I hope it makes sense. Equal to A. Equal to A plus investment plus government spending. I hope it makes sense. This is what you're going to get. Now the common component is Y. So we are going to make Y the subject of the relation, right? So we are going to get Y out into bracket 1 minus B plus BT. Equal to A plus investment plus government spending. I hope it makes sense. That's what you are going to get. I hope it makes sense. Nice one. Now we can divide both sides by this because we want Y. 
I hope it makes sense. So you're going to divide both sides by 1 minus B plus BT. 1 minus B plus BT. So this one will cancel the whole of this. You are going to get Y equal to A plus investment. But listen to me very carefully. In mass, we can write this one like this. 1 minus B plus BT into brackets A plus I plus G. Right? So we can conclude by saying that the general multiplier when proportional tax is given is equal to 1 over is equal to 1 over 1 minus B plus BT or this one could also be written as 1 over you see this one 1 will be out have you seen it then B B into bracket 1 can you see it? This one and this one. I hope it makes sense. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to factorize this one. So I get one out. One is already out. Minus B into bracket. One minus T. I hope it makes sense. So one. This one times this one give me minus B. This one times this one give me positive B T. I hope it makes sense. So it's either you leave it like this or you further up and leave it here. This is the general multiplier when proportionate tax is given. How it makes sense? Whether transfer payment is part or not, this is the general multiplier. I've told you that transfer payment does not affect the multiplier. How it makes sense? Nice one. So let us go and look at the various multipliers under this. Okay. All right. So this is the general multiplier, right? And I've written it here, the general multiplier. Now we are coming to look at the change because multiply is a change. When any one, when any one of these components changes, what will be the effect on the equilibrium national income? I hope it makes sense. When any of these components, autonomous component changes, right, good. So let us assume that, uh, let us um, first look at the investment multiplier under the proportionate or tax. I hope it makes sense. The investment multiplier. Now listen to me very carefully. The investment multiplier, when the proportionate tax is given, is different from the pro, um, the investment multiplier when lump sum tax is given in the question. So whenever they give you an examination question, the first thing to look at is to go and look at the question. Read it carefully to see whether the question involves lump sum tax or proportionate tax. I hope it makes sense. If it is only lump sum, you are good to go. You just go and use the 1 over 1 minus B. That's the lump sum tax multiplier. So every multiplier that you're going to use is going to be 1 over 1 minus B. But as soon as you see that there's a proportionate tax in the question, then every multiplier that you use must be equal to this one. I hope it makes sense. Nice one. So let us look at how to get the investment multiplier and then the proportionate tax. So we are going to take change here, change here, change here, change yet so investment multiplier is going to be one minus you can pick this one but we don't normally look at the autonomous right good so we are going to get one over um one over one minus b plus bt times times change in investment this is the investment multiplier i hope it makes sense now the government spending multiplier is going to be 1 over 1 minus B plus BT times change in government spending. This is the government spending multiplier. I hope it makes sense. The government spending multiplier. So having understood this, our next lecture, we are going to look at how to derive the proportionate tax multiplier. When lump sum tax is given, I hope it makes sense. Good. So watch out for our next lecture. Bye-bye.